Hello everyone, uh, this is Craig, just me today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Craig Emmerich. Uh, I'm the husband of Maria Emmerich and we have jointly written over 20 books on keto and nutrition um, and carnivore as well. I've been keto myself for the last uh, 17, 18 years, uh, studied nutrition for over 15 years and uh, been carnivore now for five or six years due to my uh, autoimmune situation uh, and Lyme disease that I've had. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today is specifically about protein sparing modified fast and some of the misconceptions that are out there around it. Um, I was watching, uh, I was, somebody sent me a video of a very uh, popular keto doctor with millions of followers and they had a researcher on that uh, they brought up protein sparing modified fast. Um, and first of all, in context of extended fasting, which is, you know, protein sparing modified fast is really an alternative to extended fasting in that instead of e eating nothing, just drinking water for three, four days, uh, some people do it for a week or longer, um, instead of doing that, which can lose lean mass, you do a protein sparing modified fast instead. First claim that was made was that uh, you don't really lose uh, muscle when you extended water fast. You just lose water weight. Now, granted, some you're going to lose some water weight when you eat nothing, but every single study, and I mean every single study that has looked at extended fasting, will show nitrogen in the urine. The only way you end up with nitrogen in the urine is you're breaking down muscle. You're doing uh, gluconeogenesis to turn protein into glucose because there's still p parts of your body that need glucose okay your red blood cells have no mitochondria they have to have glucose to live and so the body once your liver runs out of glucose it's got to make glucose and if you're eating nothing at all not eating any protein to make it from the food you're eating it's got to make it off the body and take protein off the body to make it so Every study out there, and I could put multiple links below, every single study shows nitrogen in the urine, which means you're losing muscle, you're losing lean mass. Uh, but the second point that was made, which I thought was interesting and frustrating at the same time, is that, you know, it's this, con I don't know if it's just a misunderstanding of what protein sparing modified fast really is, um, or just... Uh, being dogmatic about beliefs about dietary fat or whatnot, but uh, the, the claim was made that uh, you do not find protein in nature without fat. Um, and, and this was made in the context of whether you should do a protein sparing modified fast or not. Okay. It was said that you shouldn't, uh, it, it basically implied that you shouldn't be doing it because in nature you never find this in nature, right? an ancestral type diet, you don't find this kind of macros. Well, if, you, if I went out and, and right now tried to be a hunter-gatherer today, if I go out here and be, turn myself into a hunter-gatherer and, and re rely off the land, what am I going to be eating? I'm going to be eating, if I'm lucky enough to be by the ocean like we are here, I'm going to be eating fish and seafood. If I'm in inland and I'm going to be... Uh, in the woods or whatnot, I might be eating elk, I might be eating squirrel, rabbit, these types of foods. So what do those look like? Well, first of all, let's talk about what a protein sparing modified fast macros might look like. Okay. So here is an example of a, what I would consider a, a reasonable protein sparing modified fast day of macros. 125 grams of protein, uh, you know, some people maybe 100, but for this example, 125 grams of protein and 20 to 30 grams of fat. That's a protein sparing modified fast day. Really powerful tool for speeding up weight loss and whatnot. Do we find that in nature? Is it true that there's no place you would find something like this in nature? Let's take a look. Shrimp. These are the macros for a pound of shrimp. All of these are for one pound of this uh, food item. One pound of shrimp. 103 grams of protein, 8 grams of fat. Let's look at cod. Cod, 103 grams of protein, 4 grams of fat. 
This is most fish. If you go uh, even to fattier cuts like salmon, you're still not getting that much fat. It's still in this range of a protein sparing type of macro. Okay. Let's look at crab. Crab is 81 grams of protein and four grams of fat. Again, most seafood is in this range. Elk, a wild game like elk, deer, and, uh, typically are going to be leaner animals because they're wild. And this is why, you know, a lot of people when they hunt, uh, like we do whitetail deer, um, the whitetail deer, uh, is so lean that even the hamburger that you make, a lot of times you have to add another fat to it, whether it's pork or uh, dairy, butter. Um, so elk is 140 grams of protein, 16 grams of fat. How about squirrel? Squirrel is something that you're going to be, if you're living off the land and you're in the, a wooded area, you're probably going to be eating a lot of squirrels. 140 grams of protein, 21 grams of fat. Basically a perfect protein sparing day. What is a rabbit? Guess what? The term rabbit starvation came from something, right? It comes from eating only rabbit and that is 150 grams of protein, 16 grams of fat for a whole rabbit. Okay. Rabbit starvation. Let's touch on that quick since we're on the topic. Rabbit starvation refers to, uh, if you eat a very lean protein like rabbit and that's all you eat, and you're very lean yourself, you actually can run into a bit of an energy crisis because you don't have a lot of fat coming in the diet, there's no carbs, and you don't have a lot of fat on your body to tap into, okay? And that's where rabbit starvation comes from. That's, that is in the context of not having a lot of energy on your own body. So if somebody talks about rabbit starvation when they're obese, it makes no sense at all. Your body is carrying around all the fuel it needs to fuel itself. Rabbit starvation is not an issue if you're overweight. Um, and so, again, back to the original premise, does nature have a situation where you have protein and fat in these kind of range of macros? Yeah, the majority of it. The majority of the wild animals you're going to catch are going to be in this range. And so I don't think it's a, a stretch or... You know, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, pretty natural to eat in these ratios uh, out of nature, and it happens all the time in nature. Um, and so I think it's, you know, people think that uh, somehow you're, you're doing a day that just strips out every gram of fat and, you know, basically doing pure protein, you know, like whey protein shakes or something. And that's not at all what we recommend for protein sparing days. We recommend whole foods. Just selecting some of the leaner cuts like fish, poultry, uh, seafood, you know, tenderloin, those kind of things, or wild game. You know, all these wild game would be great for those kind of days. Um, and another really important point to make in all of this is that this is not something, again, back to the rabbit starvation example, if you are lean, you don't want to do protein sparing modified fast. We said this in our other videos. I'll put a link here to uh, some of our other videos that talk about this. But you know, if you're lean, you don't want to be doing protein sparing modified fast days because protein sparing modified fast days are a weight loss tool. They're a tool to help you lose weight, help you break a stall. It's not a lifestyle. It's not something you do ongoing. You add it occasionally. Um, and, you know, people even, some people out there think that Maria and I are protein sparing modified fast, like we eat protein sparing. And that's couldn't be further from the truth. We eat tons of fat. We're in maintenance. We need the dietary fat because we don't have a lot on our bodies. So we eat a lot of fat. And Maria is super active, so she eats tons of fat. Uh, and so context is key, uh, knowing uh, where you're standing with your own body, whether or not this is a tool you want to use. But at the end of the day, this is not a stretch to think that this is something that you can't find in nature. It's out there. It's every one of these wild game that we covered are pre pretty much perfect protein sparing modified fast macros if you just eat that. So I just wanted to cover that and make sure, you know, people understand the context of what protein sparing modified fast is and how applicable it is to uh, our natural lifestyle. Thanks everyone. If you want to change your life, 
like I've changed mine with food, I would be honored to help you. Many of you don't know that I was twice my size. I had acid reflux. I had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I had depression. I had IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. And food changed my life. And not only did that happen, I get to eat good food, right? Good food. So if you want to eat good food, have perfected meal plans made by me and personal help with supplements or modifications if you have Hashimoto's, if you have uh, Graves, if you have IBS, if you have PCOS, contact me. I would be honored to help you. Um, you can go to keto-adapted.com and find a lot of different options there for personalized help or message me uh, by commenting below on this YouTube video or you can check me out at mariamindbodyhealth.com. Mahalo.